right, next up, we're going to learn about human factors. And so what is human factors? Well, it's usually clustered with industrial organizational psychology because a lot of businesses and companies do reach out to human factors consultants to help them with their business. And that's because this really has to do with how humans interact with different things in our environment. And so human factors has to do with occupational health and safety. The idea of even if machines can do this, what is the outcome of having humans work around those machines? What's the outcome of having humans work around certain substances or toxic chemicals? And even if we say, here's the safety rules, what's the chances and what's the likelihood that humans will even obey those safety rules? Or how common would hazards or errors or accidents happen? So occupational health and safety has been used in lots of industries when we look at things on ways to make airplanes more safe or boating more safe or traffic more safe. And it could also be used in things like offices. And that's because the science of ergonomics can help us to stay more comfortable and more help and more healthy when we're in an office setting. Ergonomics could be things like making sure our chairs provide adequate support and adequate movement. Things like making sure our keyboards are raised or having a standing versus sitting desk versus treadmill desk. This also employed lots of trendy things in the past, such as like having a balance ball for a chair and how that could improve posture, such as changing the lighting or having different types of fluorescent lights or non-fluorescent lights in the workplace, such as trying to have sound attenuation and not having too much sound pollution in the workforce. We know that the study of ergonomics helps to argue against the use of things like many cubicles on a floor as that increases employee stress or through other trends, like the trend of having glass office walls and glass office doors and how this reduces our autonomy and our privacy in the workplace and also increases, and also increases employee stress. So whether you're working in an office or if you're working in an oil field or you're working in traffic, then this can help us figure out how we're going to interact with certain things in our environment. We can also see this happen with governments, particularly municipal governments, when they plan things like transit stations. And there's some areas where we're interested in increasing accessibility through making sure transit stations are more accessible, like they have ramps and not a lot of stairs or adequately spaced and used elevators. We also see this in the opposite end where we want spaces that are in civic infrastructure to be used less often. And this has included things like hostile features, when they put spikes on leaning rails or spikes in doorways where people might sleep at night. Or instead of having benches on buses, they might just have leaning rails. Now, hostile, uh, hostile architecture is known to make us more hostile as consumers and as the public because it makes us feel unwanted there. And so choosing what kind of elements you're going to include in your infrastructure is really going to change how people interact with these public spaces. Now, where we've seen a lot of human factors research in Canada, especially in the last couple of decades, has been particularly with driving and with automobiles. Most of us use automobiles almost every day, except during global pandemics, and automobiles are pretty dangerous when you get down to it. But most of us actually happen to be pretty safe on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's due to human factor research. Through not just understanding the physics of seatbelts and airbags, but also understanding the psychology of usage of seatbelts, it's the idea of making that little beep sound will actually encourage most people to buckle up, though some still don't. It's the idea of what is actually going to grab our attention more, a vertical or a horizontally displayed traffic light. The idea of understanding, can you actually text safely? Can you actually drive safely with a hands-free device? And how much driving is too much driving if you're a long haul driver? And so human factors is not so much about how a company is doing or how you fit in with the company, though it can overlap when we talk about workplace safety and workplace harassment. It's more about humans interacting with inanimate objects in their context or in their work environment. And again, we could also spill this over into educational settings and we could see how students thrive. Do students thrive in giant classrooms or in more small seminars? Do they thrive with certain types of audio presentation or certain types of lighting features? How do they handle the use of technology? How do they handle and navigate around campus and find their way at ease? How do you make a university experience more enticing to students? So we can see this play out not just in businesses and with employees, but also with patrons and also with students. So things like public libraries or public arenas or public parks can also use the science of human factors.